Hi, we're coming to you live from my living room, up close and probably way too personal. Okay, so I'm going to start this project by watching all of The Batman, the 2007 cartoon, The Batman. Um, I have a, a very special place in my heart for the... <laughs> For the 1992 one, like, that blocky-faced, middle-aged Bruce Wayne who's very serious and has shoulders that are, like, four feet wide. Um, so it says I've been filming myself for a minute and ten seconds, and it feels like about five years. Uh, I don't know who's out there, and I don't know what I look like to anybody who might watch this, which is kind of weird. Um. Okay, so that's the dog moving my camera. He's a good dog. He's a nice dog. Um, okay. Batman. Batman. I don't really like this either. Hello, little dog. So this is a lot harder than I thought. Much respect to people who do this successfully. I have a question about whether or not I need to justify my right to record reacting to, to shows that I watch. I hate hearing myself talk. I'm already sick of myself. I'm going to pause this for a minute. Me and my lopsided eyes are back. Hi. All right. So Batman 2007 starts off with basically introducing us to Bruce Wayne and his antagonists and his enemies, who are not the same. It's important to note, here comes the dog. Oh my god. Winston, please stop. Winston, please stop. <laughs> Great. Oh my god. This is not working out. This is not working for me. Okay. So, uh, Batman 2007. Oh my god. Here comes the dog. Here comes the dog. Oh my god. Do you have pet? Okay, I've made many attempts at doing this so far. Hopefully, this will be like, I don't know, the last one. Um, why do I want to rewatch a 2007 kids cartoon version of Batman? Uh, so I guess one of the questions I have is, why is Bruce Wayne so compelling? Like, I'm willing to rewatch this cartoon. Um, there are the the movies with Michael Caine, there's the Nolan movies, there's the 1992 cartoon, there are all the comic books, there are the other television versions, there are other film versions. Why is Batman so consistently compelling? Because he's really weird. He's really a creepy weirdo, loner, loser freak who runs around and beats people up. Um, and yet you root for the guy. Alfred really loves him. I think in order to be invested in Bruce Wayne as a character, you kind of have to buy how much Alfred loves him. This episode is really good. It packs a lot of story and it introduces everything that you need to know. It starts out showing us the Batman beating up some like extras from a mob movie and leaving them for the cops. And then we follow Bruce back to his house, which is a creepy, weird house. The Batcave is really, like, weird. Like, this is... Creating the Batcave is the, is the action of a bizarre human being. Uh, dressing up as Batman and running around beating people up is the behavior of bizarre human beings. So who is this bizarre human being? He lives alone with his butler, but his butler really loves him. Like, Alfred is all that... Bruce really has in the world. And that's kind of reinforced later in the episode. We'll, we'll get to that in a second. Um, so we meet Bruce. We meet Alfred. Alfred's waiting up for Bruce. 
because that's what Alfred does, and he has a cake for him to celebrate his third anniversary of being the Batman, which is a really touching way to introduce the relationship between these two characters. And then we meet the police, who insist the Batman is not real. Because, of course. And then we meet a detective who is tasked with catching the Batman, and he gets a new partner because, you know, we need partners to investigate crimes. Um, this detective is a young black man named Ethan, and he gets a partner who's a young Asian woman, Detective Yin, formerly of the Metropolis PD, their loss. And she's voiced by Ming-Na Wen, so I assume that it's a big loss for Metropolitan PD because that woman has never played a character who isn't awesome. Um... And these two detectives start investigating the Batman, and this is when we meet the first of the Batman's enemies. So I think the show does a good job of establishing main characters, antagonists, and enemies. The three different categories. So the protagonists, Bruce slash Batman, and Alfred, and their antagonists, the two police detectives, are all good guys. Which is, I think, one of the things that makes the Batman story so compelling, is that you get conflict between good people who are pursuing the same laudable end through different means. And through means that um, are ideologically incompatible, but in practical terms, complementary. And then we meet an enemy. We meet the Joker. The weirdest fucking version of the Joker I have ever seen. And scary. In its own way, equally as scary as uh, Heath Ledger's. And wonderfully, wonderfully acted. I forget the name of the actor who plays the Joker in this version, but he's just, he's an incredibly compelling voice actor and brings a, a ton of uh, life to the role. There's incredible voice acting in this show, I think. Um, and so the, the story's pretty simple. You know, the Joker causes trouble, Batman tries to stop him, the police try to stop him, Batman successfully stops him and leaves him for the police. You know, there's not much to it. But two things, three things happen that really set up these characters in a compelling way that makes me at least want to keep watching. The first is Alfred waiting with the cake, and also telling Bruce that he has to go to a basketball game. He's the one who makes Bruce play that Percy Blakeney role. Um, the second is that these cops work really well together. Like They are both hard-driving, and you can see there's going to be some conflict between them. Ethan kind of roots for the Batman, and Detective Yin, it, she, she's not against the Batman, but... He's still breaking the law, so it's still her job to catch him. She's very serious about that. And she does stuff like, she at one point she jumps off a bridge and swims across a, a river to get to Arkham Asylum so that she can start investigating the crime scene immediately. And Ethan jumps in the river right after her, so you can see that she's clearly like the more dynamic one. Ethan would, he would wait for the crime scene to be opened up another way, but he's going to keep up with her. You know, they're They're going to work well together and work really hard, and that's going to be trouble for Bruce. But the thing that really got me though is that Ethan goes to visit Bruce because Ethan and Bruce are old friends. And this is a great scene. So Bruce is at Arkham investigating the Joker. The police swim across the moat into Arkham Asylum to also investigate the Joker and they see the Batman. And the next morning Ethan shows up at Bruce's house. And Bruce goes, am I under arrest? There's a moment where it really looks like Ethan's there to arrest him. So he's there as part of the case. And they laugh it off as a huge joke because he's just there to visit his buddy, whom he hasn't seen in a while. Uh, they're clearly two old friends whose lives have gone in different directions, but they still, like, have a connection to each other. They're still, you know, emotionally compatible as friends, I guess, is the way to put it. And Ethan is there to unburden himself about his feelings, about the Batman case. And Bruce plays a great sounding board for him. Is the Batman actually real? You know, and I can't wait to see over the course of this series if Ethan ever learns 
that Bruce is the Batman, if it's hard for Bruce to lie to Ethan, and if it destroys their friendship, you know, or if they become allies as Ethan and the Batman. And that's that's what's going to keep me watching. That's why I want to keep tuning in to the next episode and the next episode. And there's several seasons, so there's a lot more episodes uh, to see. Please, please stop. Please stop. 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 No. <laughs> yeah. She's a dog. Yeah. I'm going to have to find a different place to sit and do this. Okay, it's okay, Winston. Please stop. So I guess that's everything I have to say. And if you watched all the way to this bitter end, um, thank you. And I'm going to have a lot of fun, I know, learning how to edit and shoot videos of myself a lot better than this. But uh, thank you for sticking around through my diary number one. And I will see you around. Bye-bye.